found out that your daughter had vanished after spending a night at uh, Froggy Bottoms and then getting a ride home from this this man that we're going to talk about in a second. Uh, how are you holding up and and your other daughter? Um, really not very well at this point. Um, I lost my husband. I've lost my mother recently. I need my daughter home, safe and sound. I'm begging, begging whoever has her or knows anything to please. I need my daughter. Um, our heart goes out to you. I really have no words, Jonna, except that we hope by showing your daughter's photo by covering every detail of this case that we will be part of the solution and maybe trigger somebody's memory about the crucial events uh, Saturday uh, 1 20 a.m. is when she left the location Froggy Bottoms and she got a ride from this 25 year old Nicholas Holbert um, let's take a look at, at this guy and he's got a past and we've got a, a, a 2003 conviction uh, he was 16 years old when he was convicted of indecent liberties with a five-year-old child. And also, there he is. That's uh, Nicholas Holbert. He was also convicted of felony child abuse with serious bodily injury. Now, he apparently lives in a lean-to behind the bar and helps the bartenders, basically a bar hand. Police say he's not a suspect. And um, he does admit, though, that he uh, gave a ride to your daughter, uh, the last person to see Kelly before she vanished. Um, certainly his rap sheet is troubling. Uh, what are your thoughts about this individual, Jonna? Um, I'm really not sure. Like I say, I've never heard Kelly talk of him or, you know, in any way. I, I don't know what to think at this point. It's a little confusing of how they would even become friends at all to me. Uh, he actually explained that on camera. We're going to play that in a little bit. It's just a, an uneventful story. He said he was playing pool, I think, with a friend, and somehow he began talking to her. But uh, Kelly is married, um, and her husband, Mike, uh, is married uh, to Kelly for two years. Now, uh, was were they estranged? And I don't ask that to embarrass. I ask that because this could be absolutely crucial because this character, this man, uh, uh, Nicholas, uh, claims that uh, she was texting very intently all night at the bar. Um, is there somebody that she might have been in communication with other than her husband? What was the status of their marriage? No, I, I think that's... I think they're fine. Um, like I say, they've had troubles in their marriage. Everyone does, but no. I mean, she texts with a lot of people. Kelly has a lot of friends. Uh, was he in the area the night she vanished Was Saturday? Mike in the area? Yeah. No, Mike was yeah. in Florida. Okay, so that's been confirmed. So he's out of the picture. He was in Florida. Um, right. He was visiting his about father in Florida. Anybody else? I mean, this man claims that she felt spooked and therefore that she asked him to drop her, not in front at her front door, but uh, around the corner from her apartment, which was about a quarter mile away. And this is a dangerous area, I have to say. Uh, there's been a number of crimes in the area, unsolved rapes and things of that nature. Uh, so it would be dangerous walking around at 1.20 in the morning or 1.30 in the morning in this area. Uh, she texted, or there was a text from her cell phone that said, got home safely. What are your thoughts about that? Do you think she was the one who typed in that text? I don't text? think she sent that text, no. I, I don't know that. I have no idea. But in my heart, I don't think she sent that text. So what are you saying there? Um, are you saying somebody got a hold? Has her cell phone been recovered by law enforcement? I'm not sure. Uh supposedly she sent two texts. Do you know what the other text was and who she sent these texts or who who these texts were sent to from her cell phone? No, I don't. Hmm. Uh, what would you like to say? We want to be of service to you. We know you're speaking to us because you, you want to keep this case alive and you want to get answers. What would you like to say, Jonna? Um... Like I say, my daughter is a young, vibrant, gorgeous woman, a wonderful person that needs to come home. And uh, 
please, if someone has her or has hurt her in any way, please let her come home. Uh, one last thing, and I don't want to make too much of this because we get false reports all the time, but I just want to ask you about this. Um, could she have had any kind of, let's say, freak out about being in, in the army. You know, sometimes people join military organizations and then they, they realize, oh my gosh, it's not for them. Do you think there was any way possibly that she might have wanted to get away? We have we have a caller who claims that uh, she saw somebody who looked very much like her in Charlotte. Now, I have no idea whether we get these false reports all the time. We don't know if it's true or not, but it, it just sparked my mind uh, thinking, could she have had any kind of like, oh, I've got to get away. The military isn't for me. I need to go away and not tell anybody? Absolutely not. Okay. All right. Uh, Jonna, please keep us updated. Uh, is there anything that I've missed in terms of where they're going to look now? Uh, and, and if so, just let us know quickly if you could. Mm, uh, I will. Like I say, they're, they're actively, actively looking. I appreciate everything the Fayetteville and the, the United States Army is doing. I think they're doing an excellent job, and they're doing their jobs. Thank you, Jonna Henson. Tonight, the sex offender who's the last person to have seen missing soldier Kelly Bordeaux speaks out as cops search a pond near where her cell phone last pinged. The 25-year-old by police insists he had nothing to do with her disappearance. You'll hear what else he had to say about the night she vanished. Then... I just can barely function without knowing where my daughter is at this point. Detectives have spoken with Nicholas Holbert. As reported by some media outlets, Mr. Holbert was one of the last persons that had contact with Mrs. Bordeaux. We got in the car, and as soon as, as, soon as I pulled into Meadowbrook, she said, you can stop right here. He's super back. Sorry. I just, um, please just return my sister. Tonight, the sex offender at the center of this search ongoing right now as we speak for that beautiful missing Fort Bragg soldier we just heard from her mom moments ago uh, speaks out on camera. Cops say 25-year-old Nicholas Holbert, the last person to have seen Private First Class Kelly Bordeaux before she vanished in the wee hours of Saturday morning from a local bar near Fort Bragg in North Carolina. He even admits he gave Kelly a ride to the bar, Froggy Bottoms, and then took her back home, but he claims she demanded to be let out of her car down the street from the apartment or about a quarter a mile away from her home. Listen. Around 1, 1 she's she told me, she's like, I'm tired, I want to go home. I said, okay, so we got in the car, and as soon as, as, soon as I pulled into Meadowbrook, she said, you can stop right here and let me out, I walk. Is he telling the truth? Straight out to Joe Gomez, senior investigative reporter. Uh, what do you know? What is the status of this investigation right this second? Well, Jane, this is very distressing. Obviously, police searched uh, a pond that was about nine miles away from Froggy Bottom Bar. They didn't find anything. Now, it's also very distressing that this registered sex offender was the last person who saw Kelly. However, this guy has a rap sheet involving kids, Jane. That leads me to believe, you know, you know I've covered these stories. Any child molester usually, you know, sticks to that demographic. Kelly is, uh, you know, an early 20s soldier. She knows how to defend herself. She's gone through basic training. I'm not sure that this guy would target Kelly. I'm not defending the guy well, by any stretch, but I think that he would probably target a vulnerable person. Well, look, she's 99 pounds, okay? Uh, she's five foot one. Uh, and this guy, 25-year-old Nicholas Holbert, uh, what we're going to show you is mugshot from 2003. When he was 16, he was convicted of indecent liberties with a five-year-old child and convicted of felony child abuse with serious bodily injury. Psychotherapist Robbie Ludwig. Well, here's the thing about people who are attracted to children. They can also be attracted to adults. Now, we don't know what happened here. One possible scenario is, did he somehow come on to Kelly while driving her home? And there was an altercation. Is that why she was asked to be let out 
when she did, farther away from her destination than one would think. Listen, it's a lot of guessing at this point because we don't have all the information, but I think it is important for people to know pedophiles can be attracted to adults as well. Well, I think you raise a very important point because sometimes, and I'm not saying he is lying, but when people do lie, they mix in the truth. They kind of rewrite the truth. Could there have been some kind of altercation of the car? She says, let me out. We're taking your calls, 1-877-JVM says, 1-877-586-7297. He is not considered a suspect, however. Let's keep that in mind. And he or his attorney, if he has one, is invited on our show anytime. Now, uh, another story we're also following will take over home. Supposedly, when the guy that was giving her a ride home was taking her to her apartment, he got to her apartment and something spooked her. So she didn't want, or she said, no, 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 just let me out here instead of taking her. And the male friend that she was with said he was leaving that Monday. It was a Sunday night. Said he was leaving Monday morning to go back to Florida. And I was talking with Kelly, and she said that she really liked to come up there Friday. All right, there you saw the man who drove Kelly home from the bar, he says, and dropped her off uh, near her home. And uh, what do you make of him? Uh, cops questioned him at least twice about what happened that night and his relationship to Kelly, and they even searched his car with a fine-tooth comb. Listen to Nicholas describe it and watch his affect. We're going to analyze it in a second. They took everything out of it and took pictures and, like, fingerprinted the whole outside and just, like, took, like, dirt underneath my car. Cops say he is not a suspect, rather a person with information. Uh, Mickey Sherman, criminal defense attorney, what do you make of this guy? Because I do notice that he, he seems like quite direct and looking in the eye. Sometimes when people have done something on tour, they look down, they look to the side. When he was talking, he seemed very sort of open, which is kind of startling to me. How about the fact that he's talking at all? I mean, he's not hiding behind a lawyer. He's not hiding behind anybody else. And also, if they did a search of his car, clearly that was a consensual search. I don't think they had a warrant. It hasn't been mentioned yet. But it looked like he gave the okay for that. The guy's being very cooperative, and he, but he's got that yellow card like Jean Valjean of registered sex offender, and that's so often uh, an excuse for deficient investigations. And uh, whenever, whenever they lead off with, well, we've got a registered sex offender, not all sex offenders are created equal. I'm not trying to be the national spokesperson <laughs> for sex offenders, but by the same token, there are sex offenders and there are sex offenders. And I agree with the other person who was on earlier that you don't make the leap necessarily or even factually from molesting Look, children to adults. There's like something like 435 registered sex offenders in that county. Uh, nobody's pointing at them necessarily, but this is the guy who drove her home, just happens to be a registered sex offender. Uh, Tom Shamshack, uh, let me uh, discuss a little bit what police are saying, uh, even um, though cops say Kelly is classified as a missing person. Homicide detectives are now on this case. The uh, police chief explained, listen to this. Anytime there's a, a, a missing persons investigation, that's usually worked by uh, crimes against persons people uh, and or homicide. In this matter, uh, homicide investigators and our persons people are working this together. All right, Tom Shabshak, former police chief. Jane, good evening. Um, I disagree with uh, Mickey Sherman's perspective. Uh, this is more than coincidence. And I, I wonder when this individual will be subjected to a polygraph exam. And the question that should be asked is, oh, she was spooked? Did you have anything to do with her being spooked and wanting to get out of that vehicle? More on the other side. Just getting started. Take your Are you I just, um, please just return my sister. Uh, this family going through hell right now. Where is Kelly Bordeaux? Another wrinkle, the area around Fort Bragg, a dangerous place. There is an unsolved rape from uh, just a couple of weeks ago, just a couple of blocks away from the bar. Uh, look at how close uh, the bar is to the most recent alleged rape site. That's less than a quarter miles away. Now, there apparently have been a number of unsolved rapes or attempted rapes. So I'm wondering, is there a rapist on the loose? Could he be responsible? Uh, 
Let's go back out to Tom Shabshack, uh, private investigator, former police chief. Obviously, they've got to look at that. They've got to look at the registered sex offenders. Uh, if the Oz was indeed in Florida, forget about him. He was out of the, out of the state. Uh, and then you've got this guy who drove her home. Again, your thoughts, Tom. Well, I would say that uh, this person of interest needs to be subjected to a polygraph. Uh, that investigative tool will clear things up. But uh, it's more than a coincidence that uh, we have a sex offender taking her home and she uh, says she is spooked, or at least he says that she was spooked. What is their relationship? How long had he known her? Uh, do we have any of that information? But uh, this is uh, very chilling. And remember, uh, looking somebody straight in the eyes, I'll offer two names, and I think the average viewer in your audience will agree with me. Scott Peterson, Drew Peterson, mm. look squarely in the eyes of their interviewers. Jane? Well, once again, he is not a, he's a person of information. That's what police are calling him. Uh, but let's go out to the phone lines. Steph, California, your question or thought, Steph? Hi, Jane. I just want to Hi. start and say I'm very proud of you. My Thank thought you. is this. By her having in, in, in the military having extensive training that they have, I'm just wondering why she wasn't able to use her abilities that particular night. Well, uh, Robbie Lovewood, psychotherapist, men are stronger than women. And yes. even when they're trained, uh, especially if you're 99 pounds and 5'1", mm -hmm. you're petite. You know that. Well, I, I was going to say the same thing, and we don't know how much she was drinking. Maybe she just wasn't on her game. If you're not expecting to be victimized in any way, perhaps you're just off your mark. But men are stronger, so they're in a position to overpower a woman, even if she is trained. Uh, Mickey Sherman, we don't want to prejudge this guy. He is speaking out. He's saying, yeah, okay, I, I was, I'm being targeted because of my background. Uh, what should he do if indeed he wants to try to clear himself? Why not take a polygraph? I, I don't see any reason why he shouldn't, and I think he probably will based upon what we've seen so far. He's cooperated in every other fashion. He just looks creepy. And that, I know that sounds bizarre, but that goes a long way in pay, let, let, letting the police, law enforcement authorities, not look other places. I, you know, I, he doesn't look particularly creepy to me. He, he looks look just like an average either. guy to me. What's creepy is his record yeah. of uh, this conviction based on indecent liberties with a five-year-old that's what's creepy joe gomez final thoughts well jane i mean you know you're right why would uh, she go home with this uh, creepy guy or why would she why would she go home with this sex offender she said uh, this guy says that she was creeped out and that she wanted him to drop him off uh, quite a distance away from where she lived I mean, what, how would he know that? How would he know that she was creeped well, out by? Let me just like say this: she probably that. had absolutely no idea that he is a registered sex offender.